Hi, it's Brad from Trans Audio. I'm here again with ATC uh, Parts today. We're their drivers. And right now I'm going to talk about mid ranges. So we covered uh, low frequency devices, we covered woofers, and now we're going to talk about mid ranges. And one of the big things about ATC that we say over and over is that the reason the speakers sound the way they do and the reason that they work as well as they do is because they have better parts inside. And ATC spends an enormous amount of energy and time and effort in building these really super duper parts while other people are trying to figure out a way to get cheaper parts to hit a price point for a loudspeaker or trying to figure out a way that they can, because they don't, you know, building drivers is not easy to do. You, we, ATC has an entire building, or that's all they do is just build drivers. And when you build these all by hand, it takes a lot of time. Now, I've, I worked for JBL many years ago, and I'm very familiar with how they did it. And back when I worked for them, they did build a lot of their big PA woofers by hand. And as time went on, they built more and more stuff was automated. And there was a, something there called the Ariaki line that was a really fancy machine that you know, it sort of like reminds me of a cartoon. You know, on one end you'd pour parts in, on the other end, drivers would come off this conveyor belt, right? And there's a lot of drivers are built that way now. A lot of people just build them all by machines. And, you know, that's fine for when you're trying to build something that just hits a general area. ATC is trying to treat drivers like a precision device. And their thought is that if you build the best devices possible, the best speaker parts possible, the speakers will sound better. And that seems to be true. Everybody that hears ATC speakers says, wow, why does that sound so different? Well, it's because of this. So here's a good example. We're talking about parts being better. Here's two mid-ranges of the same size. This is a, a mid-range from a very good manufacturer. And um, this is a typical, what a three inch mid-range might look like. And you see here, I know it doesn't have a dual suspension like the ATC does because it's too shallow, but um, and you can see they're using a neodymium magnet here. That's extra reason why it's small. But it's, um, you know, it's, it's funny. This mid-range is about the same magnet size as our tweeter <laughs> from ATC. But here's a mid-range, three-inch mid-range. If it was in a cabinet, it would look almost the same as this, right? It looks almost the same. But look at this piece of hardware. I mean, this is crazy. You go through this much work to build this thing. And what you see here is a whole bunch of special ideas about how to build the ultimate mid-range dome. When Billy built this, everybody said, oh, you're crazy, you're never going to sell. People won't like it. And in fact, they had to really sort of build their own loudspeakers to really get people to appreciate what this was. And this is a three-inch mid-range. And some of the things that are important about it is that it's suspended in two places. It actually has two suspensions. Because when you get a big, giant dome like this under a lot of movement, the, the thing can get off center and rock and change. These things, when they get moving really fast, can change their uh, behavior in weird ways. So ATC found they had to suspend it in two places to keep it moving linearly. You can, it won't work in a single suspension with this kind of power behind it. Secondly, what they do is they try to have a very small uh, coil, this copper part you see wrapped around here, the circle of copper. Well, we want that coil to be in the focus area of the magnets, which is called the gap. And by keeping that copper coil within the gap, we can keep the distortion low. A lot of people want to build copper coils that are bigger because then if they're bigger and they have more wire, it'll dissipate more heat. And heat is the thing that burns up drivers, obviously burning up. Heat is a killer of all parts in a loudspeaker. And so by having this long coil, if you were doing a live sound version of this, you'd have a really long coil because you wouldn't want to burn it up. Because this is a studio monitor version and also the same thing we do it this way when you build a hi-fi mid-range, these things are designed for low distortion and extremely high performance. And so the goal is to do all the very best work you can that strips distortion out of the driver itself so that by the time it's added to its tweeter and its woofer that goes with it, it presents information, it plays back things in a way where you hear details you've never heard before. 
So the goal of the mid-range is to strip distortion out. There's something else about this driver that's super important, and that is the shape, the dome part of it, and this waveguide around it, right? So you, you guys know I just, this is a cutout that we cut out at the factory so you can see the parts inside. Normally, obviously, it's a complete driver. But this is called the waveguide. This sort of is like a horn in a way that aims the sound. What it attempts to do is to control the sound as it leaves the driver in an organized fashion. Because if you don't control the sound, it just turns into a mess out there. So by having this special waveguide on here, but this dome enables it to have a wider dispersion. If one of the goals of a loudspeaker is to have it sound good when you're not standing just in front of it, you know, like here I am standing in front of this camera, if I move off axis, the further off axis I get from the camera, you'll see less and less of me, right? Same idea with the speaker. As you get off axis, the speaker, the dispersion is restricted so that you don't hear the same sound as you move off to the side, either side. So what we tried to create here was a speaker that sounded as good on axis as it did off axis. So this big dome is ATC, Billy Woodman's big idea for how mid-range ought to be. And what, I, what we all think is a little bit funny is he developed this back in the 80s. And a uh, long time people thought it would never work. He's friends with all the people in the speaker business. And now everybody's copying it. Now you see people building large domes all the time. So it's kind of funny how you know, his idea that was way ahead of everybody else's kind of is being adopted now by everybody else trying to figure out how we did it. And we think it's funny, it, you know, nobody's built a driver anywhere close to this significant. When a speaker designer sees this part, they go like, oh my God, we could never afford to put that in our loudspeaker because it would cost too much. And that's exactly the point with ATC. That's why they build their own drivers. They don't buy them from somebody else. They're building their own, include inside their own speakers. So this gives you a good, nice overview of what's going on with ATC mid-ranges. And uh, you can find more information online on our website, which is transaudiogroup.com, and on also on ATC's uh, site in the UK. All right, well, thanks for watching.